Hey, I wonder if they're really not here after all. Well, maybe they went out somewhere. But the car is here though. When my husband said that, he took out the key to my parents' house and went inside. Huh? What's this smell? As we were wondering what the strange smell was, my husband and I witnessed an unbelievable scene right before our eyes. Dad, what on earth is going on here? My name is Harper and I'm 35 years old. It has been five years since I married my husband. Our first meeting was at a matchmaking party. At that time, I wasn't particularly thinking about getting married or anything, but my friend insisted that I should join saying it would be a good opportunity. At the matchmaking party I was invited to, I met Skylar. Skylar and the other men, including him, were all elite businessmen working for the same foreign company. So it seems like my friend was determined to make the matchmaking party a success. To be honest, I thought I would be content as long as I worked and had a decent life, so I didn't change my attitude based on someone's profession. But I joined the party along with him. The women attending the party were eagerly trying to obtain something they didn't have, their eyes filled with ambition. As I felt slightly overwhelmed by these carnivorous women, I was approached by a stranger. It seems like you're not enjoying yourself much. Huh? No, that's not true. The food and drinks are delicious. You're at a party and you're going to tell me what you think of the pub? Ah, <laughs> Harper, you're funny. Oh, really? How about we go out for a meal together sometime? At that moment, I didn't show much enthusiasm, but it seemed like I stood out to him and piqued his interest. We only exchanged contact information for now, and I didn't have any particular expectations, because I really thought it was just a formality. However, he quickly contacted me and invited me to dinner. I didn't expect him to approach me so much. Somehow, I decided to go for a meal with him just to give it a try, but it turned out to be more enjoyable than I thought. I started wanting to meet him again. After that, we went out for meals and dates several times. And we gradually became closer. And that's how our relationship started. I never expected that the matchmaking party I attended just as a formality would lead to us dating, so I was surprised. He and I continued to have a good relationship. But then it happened. Huh? Long term stay in France? How long is that? Around five to ten years. Huh? Th that long? Yeah, so Harper, would you marry me and come with me? Huh? It was a sudden proposal from him. I was taken aback by how sudden it was that at that time I was already head over heels for him, so I decided to go with him. Yes, please take care of me. R really? Yes! He was overjoyed when I accepted his proposal. He was going to be assigned as a representative to the France in six months. Before that, we decided to have a wedding ceremony. We immediately introduced each other to our parents and had a family meeting. My parents were surprised that I would suddenly go abroad for several years, but they respected my decision. At the wedding, we received blessings from many friends and colleagues. I'm glad I was able to invite everyone in America and have a proper ceremony. After that, my husband and I thoroughly enjoyed our time in America. We visited Boston, Hawaii, and Alaska. We also made trips in country about once a month. In the blink of an eye, the time arrived for us to leave America. Harper, take care, okay? Yeah. Please take care too, both of you. If you have time, come visit us. I'll make sure to recommend some great spots to visit. Going on a trip to France sounds nice. Your father and I will have to study French too. My parents and I said our goodbyes and my husband and I flew out of America. Skylar, your family didn't come to the airport? Oh, my dad is really busy with work and my mom and sister had dinner together at home yesterday. We said our goodbyes, so it's fine. I see. Well, I guess it's expected when it's their own son. And Skylar works for a foreign company, so maybe he doesn't take it as seriously, even with overseas business trips and all. Anyway, my husband and I arrived in France and started our life there. We lived in Lyon, a city known for its thriving tech industry. 
You often see businessmen in suits talking about business on their phones with wireless earphones, gesturing and walking by. I entered a cafe and leisurely enjoyed a cup of coffee. I couldn't help but think that prices in France are high. I bought groceries at a huge supermarket and went home to cook, waiting for my husband to return. At first, I felt a bit bored because my husband was the only person I could talk to. During that time, my husband suggested that I try attending a language school. I thought it sounded fun, so I immediately looked up schools. I applied to a promising language school. There were many Americans and people from other countries who came to study abroad. I was able to enjoy cultural exchanges. I became friends with an American girl, and we went sightseeing together after school. The classes were very helpful, and I even had house parties with Italians, French people, and others. I had a truly fulfilling time. After graduating from the language school, I gained a decent level of French proficiency. I decided to apply for a part-time job at a cafe near my house. A French owner there was very kind and hired me. They taught me how to make coffee and create latte art with great care. As it was a city with many businessmen bustling around, customers kept coming in nonstop. Through making lots of coffee and interacting with regular customers, my skills as a barista improved, and most importantly, my French skills skyrocketed. You seem really lively today. I think I really enjoy it because my husband told me so. I was very anxious about living in a foreign country before coming here, but it turned out to be fulfilling and enjoyable. In no time, several years have passed, and I've completely adapted to the French way of life. And as promised, my parents came to visit. But both of them were surprised to see me speaking French fluently in shops and such. You seem to have become more like a French person in your demeanor. You've become brighter compared to when you were in America, haven't you? Indeed, I may have become brighter as I interacted with the locals. My parents seemed to have thoroughly enjoyed their sightseeing in France, which was great. Afterward, my husband and I continued our life in France for a while. Before we knew it, five years had flown by since coming to France. During that time, my husband received a message from his mother and sister saying they were coming to visit. Is Dad not coming? Well, my father is busy with work. He probably couldn't take time off. My father-in-law runs his own company and works tirelessly as its president, so it seems he can't afford to take time off, like for a vacation abroad. It's been a while, you two. Finally, we've made it to Leon. I'm excited. Show us around, please. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were very excited. I smiled as I saw my husband gently telling them, "Don't make too much noise." But we were about to be swept away by the whims of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I want to visit this shop. I want to go to these places. The shops they pointed out were quite expensive. Are you sure you can spend that much? It's fine. It's that person's money anyway. Yeah, if we don't spend it, it'll just accumulate and go to waste. We exchanged glances, thinking about how my father-in-law must be perceived. Well, I guess it's fun since you rarely go on trips abroad. When my husband said that, my mother-in-law opened up. Oh, what are you talking about? We've been on numerous trips abroad. Huh? We've been to the Caribbean, the Maldives, Japan, Mexico, Canada, and countless of others. We've been to France too, like Paris and Marseille. But this is our first time in Lyon. My mother-in-law said those things. From the conversation we just had, I don't think my mother-in-law or sister-in-law would have brought my father-in-law. They must be spending extravagantly on every trip. My husband seemed stunned, seemingly unaware of that fact. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law didn't stay at our house, but booked a luxurious hotel for their entire stay. When it was just my husband and me at home, I couldn't help but feel concerned about their spending habits. I never expected it to be to this extent. I thought, feeling bewildered, they must be splurging without a care, since my father-in-law is a business owner with good earnings. I was grateful that, despite having a mother and sister like that, my husband had a sensible sense of money. After that, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law stayed for a few more days. Every day, they spent money in a surprising manner. 
they were spending extravagantly, like celebrities. Well, that's a matter to be discussed between my father-in-law and mother-in-law, so I didn't particularly interfere. Still, I couldn't help but worry if it's okay to spend so extravagantly. And when my mother-in-law and sister-in-law left, I felt exhausted. It's like when you're with people who think only about themselves. It drains your mental energy. My husband also seemed quite tired. Harper, thank you so much for taking care of me these past few days. Afterward, we returned to our usual daily life. The five years of married life in France have been incredibly enjoyable. And my husband's overseas assignment has been extended for another three years. We decided to continue our life in France for the foreseeable future. And those three years also flew by in no time. I can't wait to experience life in America after eight years. We've only returned to America 12 times in total, despite everything. The last time we went back was about four years ago, and now everything must be completely different. We concluded our long overseas assignment and returned to our home country. When we arrived in New York, we could immediately feel the familiar atmosphere and scent of America. After staying in a hotel, we immediately began searching for an apartment near my husband's workplace. We visited several properties with the intention of renting a place close to his office. We found a promising apartment and signed the contract. Then we went to visit each other's families to share the news of our return. First, we went to my parents' house. My parents were overjoyed to see me again after such a long time. However, as time passes, parents also age, so we should cherish every moment we have with them. Well, I'm almost 70 years old now. We're enjoying a leisurely life as a couple. That's great, as long as you're in good health. We shared stories and had a great time talking about our experiences in France. We ordered delicious pizza delivery and enjoyed a drink, creating a fun time together. As it was already late, we decided to stay overnight at my parents' house. A few days later, my husband and I visited my in-laws' house. But when my husband tried calling them, there was no answer. At least we wanted to give them a brief greeting, so we decided to visit their house. Hmm, looks like they're not home after all. Even when we rang the doorbell, there was no response. Well, maybe they went out somewhere. But their car is still here. Saying that, my husband took out the house key and went inside. Is it okay to enter without permission? They might just not be aware. And besides, I'm part of this family, so it's fine. Reluctantly, I followed my husband into the house. Hmm? What's the smell? As soon as we entered the house, we were hit by a strong and pungent odor. Wondering what the smell was, my husband and I witnessed a shocking scene. Dad, what on earth is going on here? Uh... To our surprise, my father-in-law was crawling on the floor in his current state. We didn't ask how long he hadn't washed his clothes, but compared to the last time we saw him, he looked extremely thin. The smell was probably due to the fact that he hadn't been bathing. Dad, what happened? What about Mom? As my husband desperately asked, my father-in-law spoke in a barely audible voice, mentioning something about needing food. I quickly checked the kitchen and found a few cans of soup, so I decided to make soup for him. In the meantime, my husband cleaned up the dirty room and, following my instructions, wiped my father-in-law's body. Just that much made my father-in-law look cleaner than before. Dad, the soup is ready. Can you sit up? I... I'm sorry. The truth is, I injured my legs and back and I can't get up on my own. Huh? My husband and I were speechless upon hearing this surprising fact. It seemed that my father-in-law had reached a state where he needed care, and we had no idea about it since we hadn't heard anything from my mother-in-law. In a hurry, my husband and I supported my father-in-law and helped him sit on the sofa. Then my husband cooled down the soup and fed it to his father. Ah, oh, it feels like a dream. I can't remember the last time I had a warm meal like this. What do you mean, Dad? Let's hear the full story after we go to the hospital. We immediately called a taxi and took my father-in-law to the hospital. He was diagnosed with malnutrition and needed to be hospitalized urgently. According to the doctor, his condition was quite critical. 
After receiving some intravenous fluids and calming down a bit, we listened to my father-in-law's story. How could mom and the others? The story we heard there was shocking. Apparently a few years ago, my father-in-law announced his retirement due to the leg and back injury and entrusted the management of his company to his subordinates returning home. During that time, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law didn't provide any caregiving or household support at all. Not only that, they went out to play every day and left everything to the hired helpers. However, the helpers were only contracted for daytime assistance, and the responsibility fell on my mother-in-law and sister-in-law during the nights. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law found caregiving burdensome. Dinner consisted of leftovers or snacks, with very little and nutritionally insufficient food. My father-in-law kept losing weight rapidly. Moreover, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law frequently went on trips, leaving my father-in-law behind. Gradually, my father-in-law grew weaker, not just in his legs and back, but his arm muscles also weakened, greatly reducing what he could do. And even now, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are on a one-week trip to Europe. I thought I might die. Dad. My husband and I were filled with an immense anger towards my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. We decided to take legal action against them as soon as they returned to America. And it seems that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have come back home. My husband and I immediately visited the family home. Oh, it's been a while since I heard those footsteps. So you've come back to America? Mom, aren't you concerned about Dad? Huh? Oh, now that you mention it, he's not home. I thought you two knew and that he was just out. Don't try to deceive us. We know everything. Dad is currently hospitalized. Huh? Don't act innocent. Leaving a father who needs care and being absent from home for a whole week. What were you thinking? When my husband confronted them like that, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law seemed to resign themselves. Wow, did you guys know all of that? Skylar, you should have just asked everything without beating around the bush. Don't joke around. It's despicable to put someone's life in danger by neglecting their care. Hey, don't be so angry. We've been in trouble with that man for a long time now. You've been working all your life. You haven't spent much time at home. He suddenly made his legs and back so bad that he had to stay home all the time for care. It was a nuisance for us. So we just kept going out more and more on our end. That money came for the earnings that Dad had worked hard for all these years. In other words, if Dad wasn't here, you wouldn't be able to indulge in such luxuries. Oh, stop it. We're family, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's our own business, no matter who uses it. Besides, if he had died, we would have inherited his fortune. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law laughed hysterically while saying those words. My husband and I were left speechless. There's no point in saying anything to these people. Fine, I'll get it. I'll cut ties with you, so never call me family again. <laughs> well, whatever is fine. Yeah, that's right. You've been overseas all this time, so you had no involvement. Well then, we'll be leaving now. Enjoy your peaceful days without us. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were wide-eyed at my husband's final statement. I deliberately refrained from getting angry with them after that. A few days later, my mother-in-law made a frantic phone call to my husband. Hello, I thought we cut ties with each other. W wait why do we have to be arrested? Oh, so the police have finally arrived. I reported it. You and my sister were considered responsible for neglecting a person who couldn't live without care. What? In other words, it's a crime for abandoning someone in a state where they require care. I think you won't escape imprisonment because the circumstances are quite severe. Th that Why do we have to go through this? That's my dad's line. He worked hard for the family's sake, and yet he was betrayed in such a way. He must have been the most shocked. I can't forgive you two either. Reflect on your actions in prison. Can't we pay money and get bail or something? Unfortunately, there's no imprisonment, so it's impossible. Besides, you don't have any money, right? Dad is planning to divorce you, so you won't be able to use his money anymore. 
What? That's right. You won't be husband and wife anymore, and you won't have access to dad's money. Th this My mother in law was devastated over the phone. Well then I'll hang up now. Make sure to atone for your sins. My husband said that and ended the call. We blocked incoming calls from my mother in law and sister in law. Afterward, my mother in law and sister in law were sentenced to five years in prison. There was a possibility of probation if the sentence was less than three years, but they made statements clearly demonstrating malicious intent and neglect towards my father in law, so they received a five year sentence. Of course, I have no intention of visiting them, so I don't know how they are doing now. But I'm sure they are experiencing an unimaginable despair. My husband and I decided to take in my father in law. We had just signed a lease for an apartment, but my father in law said he would buy a new property and build a barrier free house. So we decided to build a spacious house and live together with the three of us. The next day, we had our first child, and now the four of us are living happily together. If we had arrived a little later, my father in law might have passed away. When I think about that, I can't help but feel that my mother in law and sister in law should have faced even harsher consequences. I am truly relieved that my father in law is safe. From now on, I hope you, the viewers, will create many happy and joyful moments with your family. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you in advance, and let's meet again in the next video.